you. I'm so glad you're on Bethy Live. I am so I love crushing thrilled. on handsome men. Oh, you know, I've had a crush on you for well, a couple of days. Yeah, a couple of days here. A couple like minutes. Like forever. Like, we just said it, but we're not saying it again. <laughs> like, when in, in another life we're getting married. Uh, or we were already, and we'll get oh, yeah. remarried. Okay, yeah. perfect. <laughs> it would take all day for you to list all of your it would. accomplishments. Like today and tomorrow like today and, and the tomorrow, next day. I have to start a whole new website. Well, yeah. But tell everybody, <laughs> you basically went to New York, and you were president of Ford. Ford, mm -hmm. Ford for 19 years mm -hmm. and managed 36 of the biggest girls in the world in the business, from mm -hmm. Naomi to all of those girls. Mm -hmm. And um, loved it. I mean, Eileen Ford just sort of adopted me. Yeah, and you were really close to her. Very. She was my other mother, and everything she ever wrote to me, she signed Love Mom. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. And it was a very smart thing to do. It's about, I don't know, three years in, the Chronicle did a profile on me, and one of the questions was I mean, you were so young when you started this business. I said, I, okay, first of all, I was so young and so stupid that I didn't know you could fail. I just thought you just did it and it worked. Right. And that was my attitude every single day. So we never did fail. So, and they were like, are you the kidding? The beauty of youth. The beauty of youth, you know, blind and naive and stupid. And so it just worked. But one of the reasons it worked was right away, I got very lucky again because I met this girl named Karen Wilcox, and she was like 17 years old, and the perfect model, I mean, absolutely perfect. So I put together a group of about 10, 12 girls and like four or five or six boys, all brand new models, got gathered up pictures, put them in a book, and flew to Milan, Paris, London, New York. Wow. And I would just go in, I remembered some of the names of the best agencies, mm -hmm. So I would just show up with my little book and my little business card, and I'd be there. Be like, "Do you have an appointment?" And I'd say, "No," but they're like, "Well, we don't see models." On, and I'd say, "I'm not a model. I'm an agent." Mm -hmm. And there, these receptionists would be like, "Because you're so young." What? They... So I'd be like, "Here's my card, and here's my portfolio of my models that I represent, and I'm here to place them." And within five minutes, the owner of the agency would come out and say, come here, would you like coffee, champagne, really? can I take you to lunch? Your models are amazing. Well, this first girl, they were all placed. You I mean, every single beginning. agency I walked in wanted every single model in my book. So, so you knew how to pick out a model. I did, I mean, line. somehow. And it was probably from sitting at castings as a model, looking, sizing everybody. Yeah, and who's getting picked and who isn't. Right. Yeah. And so it's really funny because um, the first girl that left for Europe was Karen Wilcox and she arrived in Milan and her first booking was the cover of Italian Vogue and she was Jeez. so great that the photographer he was just going to shoot a beauty story on her and he sent everybody else home shot all the fashion on her shot the beauty, did the cover and in one minute she was a mega star yeah. and everyone was on my doorstep <laughs> I never bought another plane ticket. Wow. Not once because the here. world came right to my doorstep. Wow. Every top agent from every market on the planet. Unbelievable. I'm talking Japan, Australia, every every literally Everyone everywhere. That's amazing. And so it sort of made my name, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then it went kicked up another notch where all the New York agencies were trying to recruit me. They're like, you should not be in Texas. And Eileen used to say it to me every yeah. year when she would come. And um, so finally I did, and it was right. said something, Brent, she was younger than me and had not even been in the business. At least I had a few years experience. And she was smacking some food in her mouth and she was sitting across from me and she said, can I tell you something? Can I just tell you something? And God said to me, this is your moment. This is and I stood up precedent. and I leaned all the way across that table and I said, can you tell me something? <laughs> Can you tell me something? You can't tell me, and I used every bad word I'd ever heard. Everyone was hanging up their phones. Wait, wait, what's they're going like, on? get the popcorn. Texas is, is Texas is coming Texas. out. <laughs> here it Baytown comes. Baytown is up in here. 
It's really true. And so, I mean, that was it. And from that moment on, everyone was like, Yes, Mr. Oh, Campbell. okay, that, that, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and it was a turning point. A five-year plan to rebuild it, and I did it in 11 months. Elite? Mm-hmm. Wow. I've trapped, I flew, uh, it was not, I mean, I lived it 24 hours a day, and I, can, I healed the company financially, I healed it internally, I, I, I reattached all these relationships that were fractured and fragmented or completely broken, and then I went out and I just found a ton of models. And, and again, I got very lucky. Joan Smalls, number two model in the world on models.com right now, walked right in the door one day. Car, I'm traveling and this agent says, oh, I just saw this girl in, in, um, in St. Louis. Here are some pictures of her if you're maybe, and I was like, I'm on the next plane. That girl is Carly Kloss, the world's biggest model. And I went out there, I got her, I brought her back to New York and I made her and Coco Rocha, and all these stars. My uncle ran mission control for IBM. So all the Apollo mission, um, all the Apollo missions, Neil Armstrong, everyone, they took things up to the moon and brought them back for me. So I have a box of things that um, astronauts um, brought for me, and all the lunar missions had a gold medallion that were place somewhere in the capsule and went to the moon and came back and they were given to people special mm -hmm. connection to the missions and my uncle got them and he gave them to me that's amazing we have five senses that we are aware of right and i think if something's beyond our fifth sense meaning our sixth sense we then we sort of short circuit and we don't understand it but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist it's like trying to teach a dog so calculus true. Right. Just because the dog doesn't understand calculus doesn't mean it doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. And that's a great analogy. It, it doesn't have to be very, very... I could, I could freak out going up a very high overpass in uh -huh. Houston. Oh, yeah, yeah. As I I'm like coming either. up them, yeah. I'm just like... And it starts, yeah. and my legs start aching. Isn't that weird? And a psychic, that was just a guest at a dinner party, said to me, can I talk to you? And she took me in a bedroom, and she said, oh, my God, you know your old soul and blah, 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 blah. And I, you know, I was sort of like, uh-huh, 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 uh -huh. because I have heard all that before. And she said, you know that you were shoved out of a window in Paris and you died. Oh my God. And I said, really? And she's like, yes, yes. And she, she didn't know you were afraid of heights? No. And this is the really creepy part. So uh, Claudia Schiffer had bought a new apartment in Paris, and it was in a neighborhood that I wasn't familiar with, because I know Paris very, very famous well. famous model, Claudia Schiffer. And so I was on my way to her apartment for the first time on a street in Paris I'd never been down. And I know central Paris really well. And <laughs> I'm walking, thinking, am I on time? What street do I turn there? And all of a sudden, this feeling came over me, and I stopped. Oh. And I looked up, and this was my first thought, that's the building I was shoved out of. It just came So you like, already knew, the psychic had already said that, so you're in Paris. And it just, the minute, it just can't hit me. Creepy. That's the building, that's the window. So I crossed the street and looked back at the building, and I just kept saying to myself, that's the window. So you were French in the previous life. Well, Apparently not very popular. <laughs> How I do you pissed say somebody piss off. Someone off in French. <laughs> and trust me, there are a long list of people that would like to shove me out of a window right now. But, and I know that. Um, yeah, I, I love doing laundry and grocery shopping. They're my two favorite things. Really? I could spend an entire day in a grocery Wait, store. Uh, I'll do it for you. Yeah. I'll do your laundry and your grocery shopping. Awesome. It's a you deal. keep writing checks to the ASPCA and Pet Set and Bark and. I'll do your laundry and grocery Wonderful. shopping. Yeah, that's a deal. All right, well, thank you. Thank it's you. It's a wrap. Mm -hmm. Love you, baby. Love you. <laughs> You're so...